Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to this week's episode of Merrick's Garage. I hope you guys got a lot of enjoyment out of the Rubicon series that was up the past three weeks. It was being a, a lot of fun engaging with you guys and sharing those trips and videos. It was an awesome time. But with that trip under my belt, it's time to turn my attention back to the blazer. And we're actually gonna start focusing on the body. I have done a ton of work since I got back, basically trying to make the outside of the truck match the skeleton underneath. Everything underneath is rock solid, it's working great, it looks good, it's hardcore, but the body needs a lot of attention. The doors don't shut properly, the roof is all smashed in. I'm still using a plexiglass windshield for crying out loud. So what I've started doing, pulling the wrap, straightening the body, painting the body, and choosing my next wrap. So I'll show you what I've got done, explain how I did it, and we'll have a good time doing it. Merrick's Garage. This is some of the damage I took on the Rubicon. That one's going to be more challenging just because access up behind isn't as easy. But I've already got the ram up in place on this guy. <laughs> That's that awesome. This is the kit. Comes with obviously the ram and then a bunch of attachments. You can do a bunch of spreading. You can, uh, you've got all these hooks to mount and change the fittings. So you got soft mounts, you've got, got these, got these corner mounts. You got these jaws that will open. And there's also a come along that you can purchase separately that I have found indispensable. This kit should be in your garage. If you're doing any roll cage or body or framework, it's saved me a ton of time. For those of you who have been curious, the wrap has held up really, really well. It came off just fine. I'm going to be putting another one on and it's most likely going to hide a lot of the imperfections on this panel. Not a great job, but remember, this is going to get sanded down again and primered and wrapped. And a lot straighter than it was before. This is what I think of when I think of 90s K5 Blazers. Big tires, big lift, flat black. <laughs> I freaking love it. So uh, my body work sucks, but it's going to get knocked down again here shortly. This whole thing is a... <laughs> I mean, I think, what is this? Well, this might be, whatever it is, it's not pretty. If it's not obvious by now, I am not a body guy. My objective here is to get it presentable, not perfect. I wanna preserve these panels, because they are original. So I'm not too concerned about waves in there. I mean, there's gonna be some degree but I did want to remove as much of the imperfections as I could. So this is about three coats of primer, <laughs> some Bondo, and a lot of wet sanding. One, well, a couple coats now. And uh, I'm happy with how this looks. I mean, it's got all the high spots out of it. It's not going to be perfect. This is actually a pretty sweet patina. But yeah, love this stuff. So I'm sure a lot of you are gonna be surprised as to how dented and damaged the blazer body really is. Well, seeing as this truck has been rolled two times, it's not that much of a surprise to me. 
but the wrap has always done a really good job of covering it. You can see up here, there's a lot of wrinkles and dents in this part of the body, but you don't notice them as much because the design basically just hides a lot of it. So I will be going back to a wrap just because they work so well. I had considered replacing these panels, but these panels are original. One of the few remaining parts of the truck that is original. And I'd like to keep them. I don't mind these dents. I've done a lot of work filling and cleaning and getting all this stuff polished down. But stuff like this, I'm okay with. I think it adds character and I think it tells a story about where the truck's been and what it does. In addition to getting the body um, more presentable and removing some of the more noticeable dents and dings, I also want to really focus on getting the frame, the cage, and the body tied all together for once and for all. No more body mounts, no more bushings, no more separation. The cage is gonna be welded to the frame, the frame is gonna be attached and welded to the body, and everything is gonna be one giant unit. It's gonna be a lot stiffer, it's gonna be a lot more stable, I'm gonna get rid of squeaks and rattles. I'm gonna put that 16 inches of suspension travel that I put in front and rear to use. There's not really any point or need to have body bushings anymore with the amount of travel I have and with the stiffness of the cage lends to the whole construct. So working on getting the roll cage and the frame and everything tied in. So what I'm doing is I'm connecting off the cage to this upright for the rear gate, tire gator. Uh, this was simply bolted on before right to the body and so i was getting a lot of movement out of it i think not as much as i expected but still nonetheless so this one's already been burned in and uh yeah it's come out good so it's still bolted this isn't holding it like it was before this is holding it and i'm still going to be able to remove it much like the cross tower i can remove so should i need to change this guy out i can pop it out still so yeah Looks good. It's time to get this other one all prepped. Uh, once again, spend your time on the details. Getting all the prep work done. I'll have a nice groove to fill as opposed to something garbage. And then all this is gonna get cleaned up. Okay, we got both of them in. So it's still tight to close. That's always been my biggest challenge is getting these things to line up absolutely perfectly. Uh, so I've widened these holes a little bit. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference, honestly. Maybe getting it started. But it is definitely us uh, just doing more and more to lock down the frame and the body and the cage all together. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to get this backing plate. Right now that's just kind of stuffed in there. So I'm going to get that bolted to the body. Uh, another point of tying things down and uh, I don't have a press brake I don't have much body stuff but brute force and square tubing round tubing uh, railroad ties can be really helpful in doing some body work I know this is roughly straight so by putting it up here I can figure where my high spots are and pound them out same for this uh, little V cut. I've already done a lot of it, but you can see that all I needed was this guy. I seat it in there like that and then just mallet the heck out of it. And I end up with a pretty decent, well, all things considered, piece back here. You know, it's never the actual assembly that is so painstakingly time consuming. It's all the stuff that goes into it. So what today I'm trying to build is a connection between my frame, my cage, and my rock sliders. So I've measured it and obviously off the rock sliders, it's one and three quarter inches. So this is what I've been spending my time on. So just to give you some perspective, this is the tube. Yeah, so it's, it's gnarly. This took quite a while. Uh, 
uh, but that's sweet. Can you imagine being able to do that without a drill press? 100 bucks for this guy, and it's been worth every penny. But yeah, so today is just about cutting, measuring, grinding, flapping, I think. So, the glamorous work. This ram <clears throat> has become a go-to tool for me. So this is what I've got right here. That way it's gonna tee in, and it's also gonna tee in to that guy. So using, I'm trying to do this all one-handed right now. These are the outriggers that I made last weekend to tie frame to rock slider to cage. And each one of these, I've got two, one's gonna go on either side. They both go in the rear. I'll be building some more for the front, but uh, these things are gonna be burly. This will engage into the rock slider. This will get welded to the bottom of the, of the hoop of the cage. And then this guy gets welded over onto the frame, locking everything down. It's gonna be burly. This is the tube I had lying around. Two by two, quarter inch wall. <laughs> yeah, uh, overkill much? This roof has been through the war. It's been rolled and turtled two times now. You can see it's pretty knackered up top, but that's okay. I have a new roof that I'm gonna be throwing on. And I'm gonna take that opportunity also to do some work on the front roll cage up here. I wanna replace the kicker bars with smaller tubing. I wanna tie the cage to the frame, uh, right, sorry, the cage to the body right here. And also put some more supporting structure in between the halo and the B pillars and A pillars. I'm a little bummed I'm gonna lose all my stickers, but I think I'm gonna cut this out and probably mount it on the wall and start a new sticker collection on my new roof. A lot of the cage work is done back here too. I did a lot of it before I went on the Rubicon, but then coming back, I was able to tie everything down, finish all the welds and get it painted with this steel. It. I'm loving how this stuff looks and uh, the cage has come together pretty well. You can see over there, I've still got one more tube to put in and tie it together. That was bent in uh, the flop in Moab. And uh, I think I'm just gonna return it to how it was before. You can see over there, the, the tube that goes all the way from the B pillar to the rear. And uh, also reconnect it to these hoops. So I have some work ahead of me, but it's all gonna be worth it. It's gonna make this thing even, even better pretty stoked thank you guys for watching this week's episode of merrick's garage as you can see i'm deep into getting the blazer back up into showroom condition if you haven't seen any of my other videos make sure to check some of them out up there and hit that subscribe button we'll see you next week merrick's garage